This is the Rewaka Valley, typical of the countryside around Motueka. Below us you can see crops of tobacco, an orchard in the distance, and just below us, a crop of hops. Now, these three crops create special problems for this part of New Zealand. This is the only part of the country in which hops and tobacco are successfully grown at the moment. But unfortunately, all these three crops require harvesting at the same time of the year. This creates a real problem as far as labour is concerned. Thousands of seasonal workers come not only from all around New Zealand, but from Australia too. And in this film, we're going to tell you something about these people, where they come from, what they do, and how they live. Hops have been growing here much longer than tobacco, but over the past 30 years, more farmers have taken up tobacco growing. Until today, there are only some 600 acres of hops in the district. The work of picking generally appeals to older people, most of them locals. It's a quiet job, not physically hard, and a good husband and wife team can easily pick 100 bushels a day. For this, they'll be paid a little over five pounds. But a machine can do the same amount of work for 25 shillings, and each year more machines are installed. We called at the home of Mr. Mac Ingalls, owner of the country's newest picking machine. Mr. Ingalls is the largest hop grower in New Zealand. I'm sure that our viewers would be interested to know something about this industry in which a lot of us have a very close interest. How long have you been hop growing? I was bred and born in hops and I've been in hops all my life. Uh, how long is the season? How long do you actually pick hops? You pick hops to pick them at their very best, say, 20 to 21 days, to get them at their best. So all the plant that you have, all the capital you have invested, you have 21 to, say, 30 right. days' use in a year. Exactly. This yes. makes hop picking quite an expensive hobby. That is so. How do you get on for seasonal labour? Fairly good. This machine that you've just had operating this season, yes. how many seasonal workers will this um, dispose of? Quite 150. 150. Yes. This machine replaces yes. 150 And a tremendous lot of school children after school and weekends as well. For hop growers, this is the future. Owners of gardens smaller than Mr. Ingalls are combining to purchase machines or else hiring them on contract. And it's possible that in 10 years' time, there'll be no hand-picking done at all. There are 600 acres of hops around Motueka and 6,000 acres of tobacco. Seasonal workers who come in for the tobacco harvest are young and they need to be fit. A man can earn 13 or 14 pounds a week. Not a fortune, but he pays nothing for accommodation and very little for food. Along with hop growers, tobacco farmers are beginning to mechanize picking. The average tobacco farm isn't large, but its crop is very valuable. Mr. Hurd, you came out from the UK about five years ago. What's the extent of your holding? Well, I have totally 29 acres, 12 and a half of which is in tobacco, and the rest is hill country and, uh, and buildings and my house and that sort of thing. What's the value of the crop on these 12 and a half acres? Well, in a good year, the best year I've had actually, has it's been worth just over 7,000 pounds. But on average, during the four years I have been here, I would put it at about six and a quarter thousand pounds. Is that good for this district? Yes, I think it is. How much seasonal labor do you employ? Well, if we can get hold of enough, we will employ usually six or seven girls and six men. Now, this tobacco picking machine that you're using, how's that going to affect the number of workers? Well, we require fewer men with that machine because we can only have four men on it picking, whereas with other methods of picking, we would require at least six. If he has a machine in the field, either his own or one on hire, the farmer's cutting his wage bill. He doesn't employ quite so many people, and those he does aren't working on his property for so long. For men, the season, which begins in February, is over by April. For women and girls, there's work in tobacco grading until July. Initially, most workers find their jobs through the labor department. If they enjoy the life for one season, they often come back for the next. If they get along well with a particular farmer, then they'll tell their friends. So where do you go for your labor? Oh, well, we generally get ours, uh, well, we get a good lot recommended from Workers that's been here, I think the boys we got this year are uh, uh, here through recommendation from boys who was here last year. You have a reputation in the district of providing very good accommodation. Do you find this pays off? Oh, yes, immensely so. These girls are saving for a trip to Australia. Unlike many men who put in a season here, 
young women seemed more determined to keep their money. Lila, this house that you're in is provided rent-free, your power, your light, your heating is provided. So all you've got to do is buy food. How much is left at the end of the week for you? Oh, about um, £7.10 left. £7.10 after food, so you make about £8.10. Does that include overtime? No, no, that's just clear. And you think that's good money? Yeah, it is good. Could you do as well in the cities? No, if you have to buy, you know, a lot of different clothes and... And you don't need much in the way of clothing down here? No. Marilyn, this is your first visit to the tobacco field. What made you come over from the South Island west coast to Motueka? Oh, well, I was just sick, sick of sitting inside an office and I thought I'd like to come over and just see what it was like. Well, you've had only a month of it so far. Have you enjoyed it? Yes, it's been very good. And this is the second time you've been down to Motueka for the picking the tobacco picking season. Why did you come back? Um, Rose was a bit dry, no jokers. But you find plenty of, plenty of male companionship down here? Oh, yes, there's uh, about two to every one here. I think we've found one of the reasons why these New Zealand girls are keen to go to Australia. A lot of the seasonal workers here are, are from Australia <laughs> and they've done a big sell for their country. I'd like to meet two of them, Ron and Gavin. Ron, you're from? I'm from Wollongong. Wollongong and Gavin? Tasmania. What were you doing, uh, Ron? I was a moulder in Wollongong. And you? I was working for Utah Constructions. Now, how long have you boys been in the country? Uh, six months. Are you working together as a team? You came over together? No, we uh, just met up down here. What other jobs have you done? Uh, well, I was working at uh, three or four places in Auckland. Moving around, you know, having a look around. And do you intend going back to Australia, Gavin? Oh, yes, I think so. Around about Christmas time, I think. What do you think of the New Zealand girls? Oh, well, uh, quite all right. Rough, rough. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it rough? From May to December, Motueka is a quiet country town. Just before Christmas, hundreds of tourists come to the nearby beaches. By the end of January, when the holiday makers are going home, harvesting's begun and more than 2,000 seasonal employees are in the district. Church and welfare groups provide social amenities, but it's to be expected that the number of workers will present problems. In charge of police at Motueka is Sergeant Dakin. Sergeant, how many do you have on your staff here? I have three constables on my staff. Well, that's a total of four. Yes. These seasonal workers, do they make your work, uh, give you a little more work? They do, they make a considerable amount of work. In what way? Oh, well, naturally, crime increases with all the various offences committed by them. And do you have any assistance during this period? During the period from roughly the middle of January for a period of about six to eight weeks, I have a van from Nelson. They come over on a Saturday night to assist. And how many men would come? Just the one man in the van. You feel that Saturday night, as it is in most other uh, parts of New Zealand, if there's going to be trouble, that's the night you're going to have trouble. That's the busiest time. <laughs> Sergeant, we're under the impression that uh, uh, this business of delinquency among these seasonal workers is very much exaggerated. Would you go along with this? Well, yes, I think it is exaggerated. The place is a bad name and people are inclined to exaggerate it. There's a lot of seasonal workers come here. In fact, I'd say the biggest majority of them come here. They never get into trouble. We don't know they've come and we don't know they've gone. Is there anything being done to overcome this problem? Yes, it has. I believe the Labor Department have had them screened this last year. And, and so far this year, I'd say it's been much quieter. The season's anything but quiet for shopkeepers. Friday night is going to town night, and the best time to make plans for the weekend. The post office is the busiest place in Motueka. Mail is sent and collected, and the week's pay goes into the savings accounts. Or last week's pay comes out. This would be an unusual hotel because it is very seasonal. That's so, yes. You have a busy time during the season. Yes. Kaiteri, Kaiteri Terry Beach is only five miles away, so in the summertime you must have a busy time too. Yes, very busy. How many flagons would you get through on a Saturday? Well, we're doing about a thousand uh, a week at the present time. Now, that's 500 gallons of beer a week. Just over that, yes. What does that drop to when the, uh, when the holiday season and the picking season is over? Oh, about 500. That makes it a little bit easier then for you, Much so easier. it's about half yes. the capacity. That's right, yes. What do you think of the conduct of your patrons in the, uh, with the seasonal workers? 
Oh, on the whole, they're quite good. Most of them very good. Yes. Uh, good types, but uh, you get the odd type, bad type, the same as everywhere else. You find this very different from running a hotel anywhere else in New Zealand? Oh, much different, yes, much different. Any after-hours trading? None whatsoever. In this intensely cultivated area, growers pay out £600,000 a year in wages. Nearly all this money goes into the pockets of seasonal workers, some of whom find that getting their share of it is not as easy as they thought it might be. Do you like the work? Well, it's not bad now, really, compared to the first few days when we started. You know, it was a bit lousy then. Do you find it a dirty job? It is, really. Not for girls, I don't think, anyway. I think it's a man's job. You don't think girls should do this kind of job? I don't think so, no. What sort of work would you rather be doing if you continue to work around here? Around here? Yes. Well, I think if I had my way, I'd um, stay on the fruit picking, you know. It's a much cleaner job, and I'd say it's more interesting, too. Why don't you? Well, I've done fruit picking before. We used to do it when we were at home, you know, just to fill in time. And I just thought I'd like to try tobacco. But if I hadn't known it was like this, I wouldn't have done it at all. And it's a bit late now to start, really. It's like sort of walking out on somebody, and I don't like that. Across the bay is the city of Nelson. And through its port, each year is shipped a million cases of fruit. From mid-February to early May, pickers and packers work on the orchards and in the sheds at Tasman, Motueri and Redwoods Valley, the apple-growing settlements near Motueka. In the same way that hop and tobacco growers have pooled machinery to save wages, orchardists have formed picking companies. Eight growers are together in the Bluffs Packing Company. In a good season, 80,000 cases of apples come out of their shed. Surrounded by a bevy of admiring beauty on the grading line, we found Doug, who comes from Melbourne and Victoria. Doug, what, was you, what were you doing before you came out here? I was working for the AMP. In the insurance business? That's right. Well, this is quite a far cry from working in an office. Why did you decide to come over? Well, I'm touring around New Zealand for nine months, and I'm going overseas on the Arcadia. Now, you, you came here to make some money. That's How much right. do you make a week? Uh, not very much, I'm afraid. Casual, Ru casual labour doesn't pay very well. Well, roughly how much? Uh, approximately about between 14 and 16 a week. But then uh, they provide you with accommodation here? That's correct. Accommodation mm. good? Very good. They feed you or do you have to meal yourself? Uh, three square meals a day. Oh, you have a meal provided by the, by the packing? That's correct. Pete. Doreen is one of the fastest packers in this shed and she's from Tasman. This is your actual hometown, Doreen, is it? Yes. How long have you been packing? This is my fourth season. And what do you do when you're not packing apples? Do you stay here in Tasman? No, I usually go to Wellington or Auckland. And what sort of jobs do you take there? Oh, coffee bar work mostly. Which part of New Zealand would you prefer to work in? A Wellington. And why do you come back here? Oh, to make a bit more money. You feel that money's good? Yes. You can make more money here than you can working in a coffee bar? Yes. Vivian comes from uh, Western Australia, 50 miles south of Perth. How long have you been out here, Vivian? Four months. How long have you been uh, grading apples? Well, it's our third week now. How are you enjoying it? Well, it's very boring. Um, what job were you doing in, in, in Australia? Um, cashier. Well, that's, surely that's fairly boring too, isn't it, being a cashier? Oh, no, not really. <laughs> you find this boring because you're doing the same thing all the time? Yes, you? it's just the same thing over and over again. Not many people come to work round Motueka with the intention of saving a great deal of money a few are drifters, unable to settle anywhere. The majority are here simply to have a working holiday. Do you find that being a Maori makes any difference down here? No, it's not at all. That's how I got on quite well with anyone. Yeah. Would you like to come back again? Oh, I don't know. It's, um, actually, when I've been in one job, you don't like, you know, yeah. keep moving around, you don't. Once you've learned one job, um, you like to learn a different job. <laughs> what do you do with well, the money? It'll be all right to come back down again. What do you do with the money you get? Oh, don't save it, that's for sure. <laughs> what do you spend it on? Oh, having a good time, parties. Now, what about the people, the other workers? Oh, I think they're all good fun. They're, they're really good sorts. I mean, you might meet some rough ones, but never mind. You've just got to take it. Five days work, two days play. It makes for a well-balanced life.
And then, Monday. Rows of tobacco to be picked, boxes to fill. Apples to wrap, cases to be made. And another week's money to be earned. This then is Protoeca. We've met some of the people who live here. We've met some of the people who come here for casual employment. We've seen too how machinery is continually taking over from what hands used to do. But for a long time to come, Motueka and the surrounding district will be dependent on the goodwill of the labor that will come here for the flush of the season.